Um, we're opening tomorrow. It's been an effing nightmare. You're actors, or he is, or he thinks he is. <laughs> you can feel my pain. So imagine what it's like to not only get a new play ready, but also to have to build a brand new bleeding building in which to put the brand new bleeding play from the ground up. Literally, from the friggin' frozen ground up. That's what we've been doing. And tomorrow, God willing, it'll bear fruit. We have two new plays to go, and when we finish putting the rush on the roof, we'll have a spanking new stage. But holy mother of God, what a nightmare. It started when the lease was up on our old place. Now my dad, James Burbage, who apart from being an actor, doubled as a carpenter, gotta have the day job, right? <laughs> built our theatre on a piece of land that he had leased from one right a-hole of a landlord, as it turns out. Now being the uh, salt of the earth sort of bloke, my dad calls the place the theatre. <laughs> Who names a theatre the theatre? It's like calling your dog the dog. He did that too. <laughs> Called the dog, dog. <laughs> Meat and potatoes, my dad. Now, talking of meat and potatoes, one of our blokes, when he started with us, was the valet. My dad had him uh, parking the horses for all the rich mucky mucks coming to see our plays. She job, valet. <laughs> Crapping horse manure everywhere. Then we find out the bugger can ride. Now, shit shoveler, as we fondly call him, is co-owner with me and my brother of our new place, the one we're opening tomorrow. You see, when my dad came up with the idea to build a theatre called The Theatre, it had never been done before. My Uncle John had built the Red Tavern into a performing space, but that was just a venue, not a building, dedicated to the acting of plays by professional actors. My dad realized this was a way for us actors to control our own destinies. No more traipsing, knee deep in blood from bleeding country mansion to country mansion, performing for the oi oligoi. It was genius. Now, the obstacle, however, was we weren't allowed to build a theater inside the city walls because the city council is all a bunch of bleeding, wanking Puritans who believe that because we dress our boys as girls, God has brought down the bleeding pox on the lot of us. I wish that lot would just get on a ship and bugger off to some distant <laughs> land. <laughs> Pain in my rear end, they are. Anyway, the challenge was that because of the Ponzi Puritans, we had to find a piece of land outside the city, but close enough so that the groundlings would walk to see our plays. My dad found the perfect spot, just north of Bishopsgate, across from the Finsbury Fields. So he goes to lease it. Now, the landlord, he thinks we're bonkers. You're going to build a what? A theatre. What's that? Well, it's a place where actors perform plays. Well, how are you going to make any money? <laughs> well, people will pay to watch us perform. The bloke pisses himself laughing. <laughs> if you say so, mate, what are you going to call this place? For fear. <laughs> now, laughing his head off, the landlord takes the money for a 21-year lease, and off he goes, convinced we'll be back cap in hand, begging to be let out of the lease because the fear has gone to pot. Well, the bugger was wrong. The theatre made a fortune. The city turned out in droves to cross those archery butts and watch us, partly because shit shovel of valet turned out to be a really good writer. <laughs> Once Kit taught him how to turn out a verse. Our ticket boxes were stuffed with pennies. We were itinerant actor scum no more. <laughs> Fast forward 21 years. The lease is up. The landlord and all the city, including Her Majesty, who loves our place, especially shit shovelers, mm -hmm. saw my dad knew what he was doing. There's money in the theatre. So the pisshead landlord tells my dad he's not renewing, renewing the lease and he's taking possession of our theatre for himself. He tells my dad, 
you can rent it from me. Ma Pa was born in Lancashire. <laughs> you do not tell a Lancastrian he can rent his own fucking building. <laughs> but to my amazement, my dad just smiles and he says, let me think it over. Gloating, the landlord struts off, boasting what to one and all how he's bested us. We're the laughing stock of the sea. Still, my dad does nothing. Shit shoveler starts whining about how he has to go back home because he's got a wife and kids to feed. <laughs> Bloody drama queen, that one. <laughs> <laughs> then my dad is the landlord's gone north on some business. So he says, Richard, go to street, tell him to meet us at the fair after dark. Now, Street is the best carpenter in the sea, and I'm bewildered. But go, he tells me, and get Shit Shoveler to round up the actors. So we did. And in the dark of night, me, Shit Shoveler, and the actors stood before our former home and shed a tear. Because that's what actors do. <laughs> Meanwhile, Street and my dad are huddled together when Street bursts out laughing. Are you out of your gourd, Jim? But can we do it, Peter? Why not? Says Street. And so my dad turns to us, weeping willows. All right, you bunch of milksops. Take it down. What? He points to his beloved, the theatre. Take it down, timber by timber. And we did. We took that theatre down and we laid on the frozen ground, plank by plank. I told my dad, we're gonna go to jail for this, he smiled. Now we won't. I knew that git would try something. So I had a clause put in the lease. What clause? The one that says, the land is yours. And then my joiner dad points to the planks, but the wood is mine. <laughs> in perpetuity. <laughs> Now, though we marvelled at my dad's legal acumen, we were flummoxed about what we were going to do with the planks. Until Street shows up with some carts. Load them up, lads! And with the rising sun threatening to reveal our enterprise, me, the actors and shit shoveler, load up those planks. <laughs> Take them to the river, my dad instructs. Still with no idea what we're getting into, we drove the plank-ridden carts to the river which, because it was the deep of winter, was frozen solid. Drive him across, my dad tells us, with the ice cracking beneath us. We <laughs> trucked. <laughs> I watched that show too. We, <laughs> we trucked that treasured oak across the water. Street, very smartly, had taken the bridge, and he was waiting for us on the other side. Well, now what, Peter? We're going to put it all back up again. He tells us, where? There. Street points to an empty plot of land, which unbeknown to us, my dad has just leased. Crowds gather to stare in awe as we lovingly rebuilt my dad's beloved the theater far away from that now ranting landlord and his empty plot of land to the north. Sure enough, the old git tries us to have us all thrown in jail. But that clause about the ownership of the wood held up in every court. We were heroes. Even Her Majesty was said to have chuckled when she heard what we had done. A great air of expectation ran through the city. What would this new home be like? Well, tomorrow we will perform our first play within that new home's freshly constructed wooden O. Sadly, my dad will not be there. He passed shortly after that fabulous night of carpentry shock and all. But I know he'll be looking down, proud to see his son, Richard Burbage, the leading actor in the country, performing on a new stage built with his wood, proclaiming the words of the shit shoveler. <laughs> <laughs> now, the two plays that the ex-valet has come up with for this historic occasion are perfect. The second one is a gender bender tribute to our old mate, the Ganymedes of Ganymedes, that genius who taught Will Shit Shoveler Shakespeare how to write verse, Kit Marlowe. Will has appropriately called it, as you like it. <laughs> but the one we're gonna open with tomorrow, the very first play we will perform in our rebuilt home, to which we have given a new motto, Totus Mundus Agit Histrionium, 
all the world acts the actor, outside which we have hung a new sign, Hercules holding up the earth, and to which, though my meat and potatoes dad would not approve, we have given a new name, is a piece about a man who, like my father, dared to take on convention. It's a play about the screw the lot of your tyrant, Julius Caesar. <laughs> It'll be an inspired afternoon of fear, housed in a fear inspired by inspiration, a house erected and re-erected by actors for actors, a house once called the fear and now called the globe. Yeah. <laughs>